Hello everybody, welcome to my video on utility maximization with CES Utility. We're going to be deriving Marshallian demand curves for good X and Y that enter into this utility function here. Uh, sigma is a parameter on preferences, A and B are scalars. I'm going to assume we can just look at interior solutions. You have to check that based on whatever specific questions you encounter. Uh, let's see, and we also have a linear budget constraint. So our Lagrangian, let's see, our objective function goes first. That's the thing we're maximizing, in this case, utility. Plus lambda, uh, w minus px times x minus py times y. Uh, and because we're assuming interior solutions, we're assuming lambda is positive and that the budget constraint binds, which is usually the case with these nice, pretty, canned utility functions. So first order conditions, because we don't have to do Kuhn Tucker, because I told you you don't have to. Uh, let's see, dl dx equals zero implies 1 over sigma as ax to the sigma plus b y to the sigma all to the 1 minus sigma over sigma that's 1 over sigma minus 1 uh, and then we got to chain rule it do the inside sigma a x to the sigma minus 1 equals lambda px dl dy equals 0 implies let's see the first part's all the same alright there we got it we got our first order conditions. Now, I want to combine these, as I always do. I've combined these into equation, and then that equation and the budget constraint will give us what we need to solve it. And the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to turn them into one fraction on each side, where all of this stuff divided by all of that stuff equals this divided by that. So let me rewrite it a little bit, but first, I'm going to cancel out some stuff. Eh, I'm being lazy. Uh, let me at least move it away from the derivative stuff. Okay. So this is it. what happens when I combine my first order conditions. I get an equation that looks like this. And the first thing I notice is I don't need those lambdas anymore. They go away. And also, all of this stuff goes away. Because it's all the same. And I am just left with a x to the sigma minus 1 over by to the sigma minus 1 equals px over py. And that's a much nicer equation to look at. And let's see, I'm going to simplify it a little bit. I'm going to solve for x. Uh, I'm going to skip a step in the interest of time. Uh, I suppose you will be able to replicate this part. I'm not doing any fancy tricks. All right, there we have it. That's your ratio of x to y. Now with that, our next step is to substitute this into the budget constraint. Our budget constraint was w equals px times x plus py times y. Let's see, that's px times All of so let's not do that. Let's yeah we will. P 
x over p y b over a so one over sigma minus one times y so there's your px times x plus p y times y all of that equals w and so we've got this thing where we have y's and nothing else. If we can solve for y, we can get our Marshallian or Walrassian demand. So, let's see what we can do. It's going to be w. I don't want red. We can go blue though. W is equal to PX times PX over PY, B over A, 1 over sigma minus 1, plus PY, all of that times Y. Uh, let's see, which means that Y star is equal to w over that ugly term px times px over py b over a 1 over sigma minus 1 plus py now this is a correct answer i have some simplifying i want to do and the first candidate for simplifying are these px's they're part of the same multiple, like the same multiplied term. Might as well combine them. So I'm going to do that, but then later I'm also going to combine those in a way. But that one's going to be trickier. So let's figure out how to do this. Y star is equal to W over, let's see, the PX. I'm going to combine it. Uh, PX with no exponent is the same as PX to the 1. And 1 plus 1 over sigma minus 1 is sigma over sigma minus 1. And that's going to be multiplied by b over py times a to the 1 over sigma minus 1 plus py. All right, we've combined our x's. Now, we still have more simplifying to do. We've got a py here and a py there. Now this is going to be a little bit trickier for us to fix, and so I'm going to walk us through this a little bit more carefully. I'm going to multiply this equation by 1. That's that trick that always seems to happen at the least convenient times. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to multiply by py to the 1 over sigma minus 1 divided by py to the 1 over sigma minus 1. Now, that's not x, actually. Mul multiplying those two fractions together does not change the value of anything, but it makes it a lot easier for us to deal with. I get w times py to the 1 over sigma minus 1 times, or sorry, divided by px to the sigma over sigma minus 1. Uh, that py down there is going to go away. Uh, this py, when multiplied by that, denominator, numerator, it's going to go away altogether. So I'm just going to be left with b over a, the 1 over sigma minus 1, plus py, and to add up your exponents, 1 plus 1 over sigma minus 1 is sigma over sigma minus 1. There we go. That is looking nice and simplified. I'm going to do one more optional step. Uh, the variant text does this. Some books like to do this. Uh, they invent some r. r is equal to sigma over sigma minus 1, which then means r minus 1 is equal to 1 over sigma minus 1. And so, what's that going to look like in our equation? W, P, Y to the 
r minus 1 over px to the r times b over a to the r minus 1 plus p y to the r. Now that's not necessary. It does make it a little nicer to look at, but then you have to remember this intermediate green step that went into all of those exponents. So that's up to you. Uh, let's see, either way, these are our two simplified y stars. And now I can substitute this into my budget constraint to get x, w equals px. Actually, let's not do the budget constraint. We already have a ratio for y to x. And it is here. Let's see, so this thing is equal to px over py b over a to the r minus 1 times y, which is w py to the r minus 1 over px to the r over b times b over a to the r minus 1 plus py to the r. Um, at this point, it's just algebra. I don't think it's going to be a good use of your time for me to go through this. There's no fancy multiply by one tricks or anything. I'm just going to give you the answer. x star is equal to w px to the r minus 1 over a over b times r minus 1 py to the r plus px to the r. And so these are your Marshallian demand curves from a CES utility function with two goods. And we've assumed the interior solution. So I hope this video is helpful for you. If not, well, too bad. Sorry to waste your time. Yeah, I think that's all I got. So thanks for watching, guys.